Hi boys and girls, good morning. Welcome to ELA grade four, lesson 12. If you have reached this website from the district website, please stop and go directly to your teacher's Google Classroom for ELA. Once you are there, we have this great teacher modeling video, which you are watching now. Learning target. I can use context clues to determine the meaning of words or phrases in a story. Upon completion, you should be able to say, I can figure out the meaning of words and phrases. I can explain the difference between literal and non-literal language. What are context clues? Sometimes when we read a text, we come across a word or phrase that we don't know the meaning of. It can be hard to comprehend or understand the text when we don't know the meaning. If we look carefully, we can find clues called context clues that help us figure out what the word means. We would like you to now watch this brain pop video and it explains context clues a little bit more, bit more further. When you are done, click on the next slide. Context clues are clues that the readers can use to find the meaning of unknown words or phrases. For example, surrounding words or words in sentences help you figure out the meaning of words. Pictures or illustrations is another way to figure out unknown words. Synonyms or antonyms, which are words that are the same or words that are different or opposite. Examples in the sentence, base words, prefixes, and suffixes also help you figure out the meaning of words, explanations, and definitions. When I am reading a text, I can look for clues to help me figure out the meaning of words or phrases I don't understand. Those are called context clues. So when you go to the next slide, you're going to find a little activity. Directions. Use the context clues, which are in blue, in each sentence to determine the meaning of the word colored in red. Use the words from the word bank to help you find the meaning of the words. Here's our word bank. Let's do number one together. I saw a bird soar in the sky. Soar means, hmm, well, I'm gonna use my context clues to help me. I see that I have bird and sky, and I know that birds fly in the sky, so I'm gonna click on the word fly, and I'm gonna get my plus sign. Once I have that, I can drag it into the box. Or, sometimes that will happen. You can just type in the word fly right into the box, and you're done. You're going to do the next two, three, four, five, and six on your own. On the next slide, you're going to use the context clues to determine the meaning of the underlined word. Here in this box, we have one example we're going to do together. There were clothes on the floor, books under the bed, and toys scattered everywhere. Her mom told her that she really needed to tidy up her room. The word tidy is underlined. I need to figure out what the word tidy means. So I'm gonna go back to the text and I'm going to think about what it could mean based on the words in the sentences. It could mean A, clean, B, leave, or C, look at. Hmm, well, I know books under the bed and toys scattered everywhere. Kinda tells me that the room is messy. So I'm going to go with A, clean. So I'm going to go inside the box and I'm going to type in the letter A right there. You're going to do the other three on your own. Next, we're going to talk about figurative language. It is when the author is using expressions that have a different meaning from their literal meaning. Figurative language can help us understand what the author is describing. For example, if the author tells you it's raining cats and dogs outside, what do you imagine the rain actually looks like? Does it look like this picture? When it rains, do you see cats and dogs flying from the sky? No, the author means that it's raining really heavily or there is a heavy downpour. Next, we're gonna try some things on our own. Here is one term you may have heard before, 
Time flies. Time flies when we are at recess. What do you think the author means? Well, let's look at the sentence. The bell rang. I was having so much fun that I couldn't believe we had to go inside already. Time flies when we are at recess. I wish I could stay out there for another hour. Time flies when we are at recess means, hmm, you're gonna type your answer here. On the next slide, you're going to do the same thing, but the saying is, it costs an arm and a leg. Maybe you've heard that term before. Use the clues in the sentence to figure out what that term could mean and put it here. Why do we use figurative language? Writers use it to interest the reader or to help paint a picture in the reader's mind, to create feeling or tone of the message or the passage that you're reading. Some examples of figurative language are similes, metaphors, idioms, personification, and onomatopoeia. The cat got my tongue. Does the cat really have her tongue? Have you heard that term before? Or does it mean she's really quiet? Or let's look at this picture. Stop bugging me. Do bugs really come and bug her? Or is it someone who's really annoying her? Similes and metaphors. Similes and metaphors are ways the author can compare two unlike things. Similes use the words like or as when comparing. Claire was walking as slow as a snail. That is a simile. Over here, we have your metaphor. Compares two things by saying something is something else. The brothers were two peas in a pod. They spent all their time together. So a metaphor is two peas in a pod. Idioms. Idioms is an expression that doesn't exactly mean what, it's, what the words say. For example, she spilled the beans, which just means she talked too much and she told a secret she shouldn't have. Over here, we have Mrs. Potato Head yelling at her son saying, don't you roll your eyes at me, young man. Does it really mean, is he really rolling her eyes at her? No, when someone rolls their eyes at their mom, it usually means that they are annoyed. Personification is when you give human characteristics to objects or ideas. The cupcake was calling my name. Mm, can cupcakes really talk? Nope. But the author used it to describe how much that person wanted that cupcake. It was calling his or her name. The leaves danced in the wind. Can leaves really dance? No, but the author used it to paint a picture in your mind of the, late, the leaves moving back and forth with the wind. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is a word that sounds like the sound it describes. For example, the ducks quacked. Quack, 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 quack. The cat hissed. <sniffs> Onomatopoeia is the word that it sounds like, and that's how you describe it. Here are some fun examples for you to look at of some more similes and metaphors and other figurative language. On this slide, you're gonna give it a try on your own. You're gonna choose one figurative language term that you learn and describe it on the cloud below. Here we have some rain or clouds. Let's look at the teacher's example. Here we have the sun. For simile, we have described it as, the sun was as bright as a light bulb. For a metaphor, the sun was hot like fire. Personification, the sun winked at me. Idiom, I was so hungry I wanted to eat everything under the sun. And onomatopoeia, the sun sizzled on the pavement. Now it's your turn to talk about rain or the rain cloud. Pick one of these figurative languages and write your own sentence. When you are done, you have two optional activities for flow vocabulary. One is for context clues, the other is for figurative language. Once you click onto Flocabulary, remember it's very important you log on with your Google account in order to view the video. Once you're in, you hit play and you are all set to go. Hope you have a great day.